almost every galaxy we see has a supermassive black hole sitting at its center, even our own here in the Milky Way. When we get extremely lucky as astronomers, we find one that is in the middle of feasting. And we've just seen the most distant and most extreme black hole meal to date. It's a roller coaster, and the best way for us to learn is to talk to the experts behind this new extreme discovery. I'm so excited to share the chat I had with my friend and colleague, Dr. Eagle Androni, who is one of the co-leads on this amazing discovery. Dr. Androni is a Neil Garrels Research Fellow at the University of Maryland. And his entire career has been dedicated to trying to understand the most extreme and rare transient events in the universe. First, I want to introduce you to exactly what type of astronomer Igor is. I'm an astronomer that is called an observational astronomer, which means I use telescopes to observe the sky. And I do it in what's called time domain which means uh, we scan the sky over and over again, trying to find changes, trying to find new sources that appear out of nowhere. I asked him if he thought people would be shocked if they knew exactly what was going on in the universe. Here is what he said. They might be if they really saw uh, what our telescope managed to observe, which is that, that there is not just the flickering of stars, there are all sorts of phenomena that are dramatic and happen anytime, almost everywhere in the sky. He is so spot on here. The sky is so dynamic and ever changing. All we have to do as astronomers is look out and collect data for us to discover something new almost every day of the year. It was uh, actually Valentine's Day this year, 2022, when we spotted a new source in the sky that was looking really peculiar. This source is uh, like a dot, like a new star that, were, that is there at some point and was not there before. Um, it, it became very, very bright rapidly within one night and then started to fade away equally rapidly. This is a very atypical behavior. So how on earth do you figure out what you're looking at when you've never seen anything quite like this before? So what we did is do a follow-up we pointed other telescopes at the coordinates of this source and we tried to gather more and more information in the optical, which is the same band of light, the same type of light that our eyes are sensitive to, but also in the x-rays, in the radio, in the ultraviolet, in all sorts of bands that our instruments are sensitive to. What we realized eventually is that this source is really far away it is so far away that the universe was just about one third of its current age when the light was emitted by the system. And when we realized how far it is, we also understood how truly luminous uh, whatever caused this ray of light was. Igor is not kidding. This thing was stupidly bright, like a thousand trillion times the brightness of our own sun. And then it took us days to understand really what we were looking at. This was a mystery object. What really helped us understand what beast we were dealing with is comparing and contrasting our observations with observations taken in the past. We realized this was very different from most of the classes of sources known. However, once again, when we learned about the distance to the source, then we could tell that the X-ray and the optical and the radio luminosity was almost unprecedented. In fact, it was very similar to other famous events that were discovered more than a decade ago. Igor and the rest of the scientists had discovered that this thing looked really similar to something called a tidal disruption event. This is an astronomical phenomenon when a star gets too close to a black hole, is ripped apart and experiences spaghettification. Some of that mass lands on the black hole's accretion disk and it releases an energetic flare into the outer universe. Tidal disruption events are some of the best ways for us to understand exactly how black holes accrete matter and how it affects the surrounding environment with them. But this event was special. It wasn't like anything else we've seen before because of one really important detail. None of these sources before was discovered by an optical telescope. This is 
an uncharted territory. So astronomers have identified this really rare, incredibly bright, incredibly distant flash of light. How do they ultimately then determine that this was a supermassive black hole having a midnight snack? In the moment that we made this discovery, we didn't know what we were sitting upon. That's why within one hour, we alerted the whole community, not about precisely what was happening, but we flagged that something peculiar was happening in the sky. Our multi-wavelength follow-up, which means that it's the combination of observation taken by dozens of astronomers, they really pointed us in the right direction, really gave away the physics of the source that we were observing. And my biggest question to Igor was, if we didn't have all of this other data from a range of different telescopes and wavelengths, would we still be sitting here ultimately wondering what this thing was? What we observed in the optical was so peculiar that probably just that alone would have not led us to a final answer to all our questions. We really needed a combination of well, the discovery itself. So we need to know something is happening somewhere in time and in space. We need to know the distance, uh, which we obtain which, with what's called spectroscopy. And then we need to have information about the X-rays. That really gave away how much energy was uh, emitted when a star was disrupted by a massive black hole. And finally, Radio observations were also so important. They allowed us to even measure how fast the material is moving in what we think is a powerful jet that was emitted when the star was disrupted. And this is something very rare, but fortunately we can make pretty precise measurements thanks to all these observations being put together. And this source, even without knowing what it was exactly, was already a record breaker. What we think happened is that uh, an object with a lot of mass, like the mass of our sun, was completely torn apart and uh, all the gas, all the debris that remain after this uh, disruption by tidal forces, it started falling onto the black hole as the material was then being sucked into the black hole and consumed by it, most of the energy was then converted into radiation, into light. And this is how we managed to observe anything coming out of a black hole. And in this case, we were lucky enough that the material was pushed onto a very collimated jet, which was pointing right in our direction, in the direction of Earth. Now this is incredible, but kind of terrifying stuff. Entire stars being ripped and pulled apart by a supermassive black hole. But don't worry, these things don't happen that frequently. I asked Igor just how rare this one event was, and it quite frankly shocked me. It's indeed very rare. Now, fortunately, it doesn't happen too often that stars wander too close to supermassive black hole and get ripped apart. But what we managed to determine is that tidal disruption events with jets happen 100 times more rarely. And there is also a catch to it. You don't have to only generate uh, a bright jet. The jet has to point straight toward you for you to see it in the depth of the universe. Some might say this is a lucky find, but astronomers, scientists, and engineers have spent decades perfecting the instrumentation, the pipelines, and the scientific query that goes behind identifying an event like this. And Igor himself sums this up so perfectly with an Ernest Hemingway quote from The Old Man and the Sea. It is better to be lucky, but I would rather be exact. Then when luck comes, you are ready. And this is what we have been doing for years, which is getting ready, getting exact, making our tools more and more precise, more and more perfect, more and more automatic. And by doing that, and by keeping on improving ourselves, then we managed to find uh, the most unexpected and most energetic souls we would have ever imagined.